In the year 1880, Woolwich was becoming an important industrial area. In July of that year, the Royal Albert Docks were opened and great factories were being built. But in all Woolwich, with its 70,000 inhabitants, there were only a few hundred members of the Royal Arsenal Cooperative Society. The Rochdale Society, pioneers of cooperation in Britain, had devoted two and a half percent of its trading surplus to educational purposes. The Woolwich Society decided to follow this example and appointed an education committee to instruct the people of Woolwich in cooperative principles. Gentlemen, you all know the reasons for our appointment. I would welcome any suggestions as to how we should proceed. May I ask how much the Society has granted us this year? Twenty pounds, ten shillings and sixpence exactly, gentlemen. I have here a letter from friends in South Wales. The distress among the miners in the coal fields has reached terrible proportions and a fund has been opened to assist them. Some of the worst cases. Could we not contribute? Yeah. 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 Rather than make a direct grant, I suggest we promote a social and send the proceeds to this fund. I second that. Will those in favour of the proposal please vote? Thus, the very first act of the Education Committee was an object lesson to the modern cooperator, a demonstration of solidarity with other workers in need. In the succeeding years, industrial woolage grew rapidly. Great engineering and electrical undertakings were established, and the docks hummed with activity. The Dockers' strike of 1889 consolidated the power of organized labor. The free ferry linking the north and south banks of the river had been launched. Membership of the Cooperative Society grew rapidly. The Education Committee established libraries and reading rooms for members at a time when facilities of this kind had not been provided by the public authorities. Starting in Woolwich proper, its trading now extends over an area of 80 square miles. Here is Joseph Reeves, for 20 years Secretary of the Education Committee. If cooperative societies are to do their work properly and efficiently, members must take an interest in their work. An interest which is both informed and intelligent. To arouse interest and to keep it alive, to provoke curiosity and to satisfy it with real knowledge is the purpose of our educational work. Lecture courses are not confined solely to members. Considerable attention is paid to the technical instruction of the society's employees. These students are receiving instruction in canned fruit display, while others learn the correct methods of bacon cutting. Courses in window display and salesmanship are regularly held in association with the LCC Technical Institutes for Distributive Trades. By these means, the RACS helps its employees to attain the maximum amount of efficiency in their work. Society attaches equal importance to cultural activities. It was one of the first to recognize the value of the film as an aid to educational work. With its own mobile film unit, it gives performances to its members, to trade unions, and to labor parties. Hundreds of members have been encouraged to join the orchestras, drama groups, and operatic societies organized by the department. between bars two and three. Mr. Leader, have you got those marked clearly there? There's an accent on the last note of the second bar and the first note of the third bar. Yes, well, that's very clearly marked. Uh, strings, have you got that place very clearly marked yourselves? Yes. Yeah. Well, why not play them?
once again from the start. New members of drama groups are first trained to express themselves in individual and group interpretations of incidents and characters before they attempt straight plays. In this way they are taught how to work as a group and become free from self-consciousness. Full of Provencal song and sunburnt mirth. Now we'll get on with the first scene of the play. Set the stage. Full of Provencal song and sunburnt mirth. Now don't forget, you're proud of your daughter's success. I want you to smile as if you were the queen on the balcony at Buckingham Palace. Right, go ahead. And so all I can really say is thank you all ever so, ever so much. No, 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 that won't do at all. Barbara, don't bur burlesque it nearly so much. Right Try ahead. it again and much more simply. Okay. Right. And so all I can really say is thank you all ever so, ever so much. That's all, Natalie. You did very well indeed. Was it all right? Oh, it was fine. Right splendid. Kiss him, dear. That's terrible! Haven't you ever kissed a girl before? Have I got to show you how to do it? If you think you can do it better, just watch. Full of Provencal song and sunburnt mirth. What on earth do you think this is? A funeral? Can't you put a bit more guts into it? And how many more times am I tell you to walk across the room on that line? Full of Provencal song and sunburnt mirth. again at this hour? Sorry, just got off the job. All right, be quick. Oh, Alan, what are we to do? Why can't we just stay here and be happy? Why not? Robin Hood's a friend of the poor. I believe he'd protect us. But how would you like to live an outlaw's life? With you, Alan, I'd go anywhere. <laughs> Now we'll go across to the fight. 
The shape of the society of the future will largely depend on the youth of today. The education department pays special attention to the children of cooperative members. Mrs. Carr took the older ones and the other children played games. Meeting closed at 7.30. Is there any questions on the minute, please? We will now call upon Mrs. Carr to give her talk. If you go to cooperative society meetings, either for grown-ups or for children, you often hear people talking about the Rochdale pioneers. Now, who are these Rochdale pioneers? Let us see if we can find out. Does the word Rochdale suggest anything to you? A, a place. Yes. Anything else? Gracie Fields. That's quite right. It's a town in the north of England, in Lancashire. Now, what does pioneer mean? Someone who starts something. Yes, a beginner. Now we have the beginners of Rochdale. But if you are a beginner, you must begin something. Can you guess what they began? Tell us. In 1925, the Education Committee began an experiment which was to have far-reaching consequences for the children of the cooperative movement. With four or five children, a beginning was made in the building of a new movement, the Woodcraft Folk. By camps and campfires, by hikes and handicraft, by physical training and folk dances, the open-air youngster was attracted and given magnificent opportunities for living a healthy life in a cooperative way. The Woodcraft idea was taken up by other cooperative societies with equal enthusiasm and spread all over the country. Now the movement can boast nearly 7,000 members. Every year summer schools are held in different parts of the country at which scholarship students combine education with all the delights of a holiday. Lectures on historical, scientific and social questions are given. Problems and difficulties connected with cooperative education are discussed and new ideas debated. A great deal of money has been spent by the society in acquiring centres for its educational work. Finest of them all is Shornell's, 